Yes, hello again, and uh, let us enjoy with new lesson about look to the Titan and expect what we are going to study. Mass relationships in chemical reactions. So what do we expect to study? It's just a quick revision about the previous lesson regarding the mass number which is protons and neutrons. I think you know it quite well. And the atom is too small to be weighted. However, we can determine, of course, the mass of one atom relative to another. And atomic mass, which is called the atomic weight. And as we get before, as we know before, AMU, atomic mass unit, like for example, in carbon, one atom is equal to 12, because carbon 12, right? And we study the isotopes. The main one is carbon 12. It means it is 12 AMU, right? So I think we can enjoy quite well with, for example, hydrogen, oxygen. What about hydrogen? It's about one, one AMU, while oxygen about 16. AMU, right? So from this point of view, it is a periodic table. And of course, you know this before about atomic mass and atomic number of the element, right? And what about average atomic mass, which is 6.941? And then it comes to average atomic mass. What about the average atomic mass? If you look here to the carbon, we studied before what is the difference between carbon 12 and carbon 13. Now I can hear you. It is the isotopes. If you look carbon here, 12, it is about 98.9%. .9%, so most of it, while carbon 13 is only 1.10%. So most element in nature have more than one isotope as we told before. So this means that even calculating atomic mass, we should calculate all isotopes. Then we take the average, which is called average atomic mass. And the natural abundance is the abundance of the isotope in nature. What is the most abundant in nature? This is what we consider, right? So now we know average atomic mass. So the mole is a substance that contains a number of atoms, molecules or other particles, like for example, 12 carbon is minus 12 isotope. So they calculate the number and found it is constant of the 6.022023, which it's called Avogadro's number. So this is, is a constant number regarding Avogadro's, and this is related to the Italian guy, Avogadro. And if we take it for sodium, it is about, it is the same water, same Avogadro, carbon dioxide, so whatever if it is uh, element or it is a compound, then it is the same Avogadro number, right? Look here, it is just a reminder you also about the stasis, which this figure shows the sample containing one mole of several common elements. If you look to here, black one is carbon, sulfur is the yellow, iron, we have it all our terms, is like nails, copper is wires, right? So this is a different shapes. What about molar mass for any element? The atomic mass unit, as we said before, is equal to the molar mass. For example, atomic mass of sodium is almost 23. Atomic mass of phosphorus is almost 31, right? Which means atomic mass is the same of molar mass. So atomic mass unit is equal molar mass in grams. Here we can see from the periodic table, N equal M gram divided by M from periodic table. That's why we give you the periodic table, of course, in the exam. And N, M, N mole is equal N atom divided by N E. 
And the NA is Avogadro number, which is constant as we have said before. That's why M over M will be equal N atom divided by NA. M divided by M equal N divided by NA. This is the equation. And the attention here is the mass divided by mole uh, M mole and molar M mass. So the number of atoms or molecules, number of atoms or molecules, and here is the number of mole and a Fugadro number. This is the equation. So please remember this uh, uh, pyramid in order to be easy to solve the problems like here to calculate number of particles, atoms, or molecules. If, for example, uh, two moles of hydrogen, right? Now I can hear you. So you will, you will multiply Avogadro number by number of moles. Two moles of hydrogen, it means multiplied by two. What about if it is helium? It's the same, right? Number of moles will equal the Avogadro number and, right, the, uh, sorry, the number of moles here divided by Avogadro number in order to get number of moles. So that's why you use such equation depending on what they give you. So if they give you number of atoms, then it is 6.46 gram. And helium, so, so the molar mass of helium is four gram per mole. So we divide 6.46 divided by four gram in order to get 1.62. If we would like to get the number of atoms, then it is Avogadro number, which is constant, multiplied by number of moles, which you already get from here. So please practice with such a diagram for many questions and work in group in order to share knowledge with each other. What about molar mass? It is relationship between mole and the molar mass. So if we take the number of moles, it will be mass divided by molar mass. Take example, how many grams of zinc, right? In 0.356 mole of zinc, right? First, we must get what is, what is the molar mass of zinc from periodic table. You don't memorize it, because you get it in the lab. You get it in the exam. So then you have the equation here. Number of moles equal mass divided by molar mass. As you can see from such a diagram, right? So mass equal number of moles multiplied by molar mass. What about how many number of moles? Here it is. How many grams? What about molar mass? Here is the molar mass. Right? Then you get the mass. So this is how you practice. So do you understand now molar mass? How many atoms are in 0.32 of sodium? Then you must get sodium. How much from the periodic table? It is 23, right? And now you have number of atoms. How much? You have here mass. M is 0.32. So as we said before, the equation, now you have, this is Avogadro number, right? And here, how many atoms, right? And then the mass is 0 0.32 and divided by M, which is from periodic table, 23. Then you can get N as you can see. So, and as I told you from periodic table, sodium is 23. That's how you get N in atoms in the final like that. Another equation is how many atoms are in 16.3 of sulfur. Now it is sulfur. Sulfur from periodic table is 32. So the number atoms is unknown. Mass is already 16.3. Now you have all the information. Now since you apply in order to get the number of atoms. So here is a, a the mass, which is 16.3, right? And then Avogadro number divided by 32, which is from periodic table. I think now it is very easy for you. So you don't memorize anything. You just know 
the pyramid equation, then you apply all the factors and you should remember to get uh, uh, N, uh, N A from the periodic table, right? This is the only one you get it from periodic table. Then what about molecular mass? You can talk about, for example, take this, about sodium hydroxide. Now, you know, sodium is, we say, 23. Oxygen, 16. Hydrogen is 1. If you calculate 23 plus 16 plus 1 equal 40. This is the atomic mass unit of sodium hydroxide. So the molecular mass of sodium hydroxide is the atomic mass of sodium and the mass of oxygen and the mass of hydrogen. This will give you the molecular mass. So the molecular mass of the compound, you look to the element, sodium, high oxygen, hydrogen. From periodic table, 23 plus 16 plus hydrogen. You get the molecular mass. I think it is very easy for you now. What about molecular mass of sodium disulfide? Again, sodium, uh, sulfur, sorry, sulfur, 32. Oxygen, now is two atoms. And each one is 16. So it will be two multiplied by 16. Then you get the molecular mass of SO2. You can practice now in water. Two multiplied by one plus 16, it will give 18 AMU. So for any molecule, please remember molecular mass AMU is equal molar mass in gram, right? Another example, how many molecules of essence C2H5 are present in this of ethan C2H6. First, now I can hear you. You get the molar mass. How many carbon? Two multiplied by 12. How many hydrogen? Six multiplied by one. This equal the molar mass. So we should calculate the number of moles. So the number of mole from the previous uh, pyramid table is equal mass divided by molar mass. Now we already have the how the amount here, mass, who is a mass, 0 0.3 divided by the molar mass, which is, we got it by calculating it from periodic table. So two multiplied 12 from periodic table. Hydrogen six multiplied by one. This will give you number of modes. So the number of molecules is equal Avogadro number, which is constant multiplied by number of modes, which we already get. Then please practice on such a nice examples. Again, for example, how many hydrogen atoms are present in this amount of urea? Now, this is, you have to calculate the urea, right? Molar mass of urea is 60.06 gram. So we calculate the number of moles. Number of moles is equal mass divided by molar mass, as we said before, then you apply for the equation as we said before in the previous examples, etc., is the same here. How many hydrogen atoms are in 72.5 of C3 of C3H8O? Now, number of hydrogen is unknown, and mass is 72. And then you must calculate C3H8O. C3, 3 multiplied by 12, plus 8 multiplied by 1, plus 16, right? Then this is how you get it from a periodic table. Then you, number of hydrogen, you calculate it in this equation. Please practice on such examples. So we must know that molar mass, the atomic mass is the atoms, like these atoms. Molecular mass is molecules, which is like HCl, hydrogen, etc. This is the front. What about percent composition of compound? How we calculate? Yes, this is very easy as well. This is the equation here. N multiplied by molar mass divided by molar mass of the whole compound. Then we can get the mass of each one of them. Like for example, let's take C2H6O. How many carbon here? Two. From periodic table, multiplied by 12. Hydrogen, 6 multiplied by 1. Oxygen, 1 multiplied by 6. How we calculate the percentage of carbon? How many carbon in the molecule is 2? Multiplied by 
it's I don't atomic mass from the periodic table 12 divided by the whole amount 46 it will give you 52. Now we can calculate hydrogen. I think you know now how many hydrogen are six multiplied by hydrogen is one divided by this 46. Now you can see it. It's correct. So six hydrogen multiplied by one divided by 46. The same of oxygen is only one, which is 16. Multiply 16 divided by 46. Now we can see one. Multiplied by 16 divided by 46 equals 34. If you calculate all of it, it must be 100%. If it is not 100%, it means you did a mistake. And this is how you form the compound. So calculation of all of them, it will give you 100%. So you check the answer, it is correct. From this, I think now you know what about how we can put chemical reaction? What about chemical equation? What about reactants and the products? I think we will understand also it in nice way. The left hand side is the reactants. When it is reactants, it means more than one compound reacted together in order to give a product which can be one compound or one or more than one compound. Let us take three ways it can be represented as a chemical reaction of hydrogen and oxygen. This hydrogen, as we said before, plus oxygen, right? It will give you water. Why two is here? Right, because we must balance the equation. Here is two hydrogen plus one oxygen. If you calculate how many oxygen here is two, but here is only one, this means you must put here two in order to be two oxygen, like two oxygen here. Now hydrogen is four, then we must put here two, then it is four. This means that you have balanced the equation. This is very important in chemistry that the number of atoms in the left hand side equal to the right hand side. So now four hydrogen, here is four hydrogen. Two, ox two oxygen here, two oxygen here, right? If we take another example, oxygen and hydrogen is equal water, right? Here, one oxygen, but here two oxygen, right? This means that you must balance the equation. Here is four hydrogen, here is only one hydrogen. Then we must balance the equation. Another example about magnesium with oxygen, same way, two oxygen must put here two because magnesium is too positive and the oxygen is too negative. So two atom of magnesium plus one molecule of oxygen make two molecules of MgO. It means two moles of magnesium plus one moles of oxygen make two moles of magnesium oxide. From periodic table, 48.6 of magnesium plus 32 of oxygen, you know, before oxygen is 16, right? Make 80.6 gram of magnesium oxide, right? This is a molar mass, gram per mole. Then here, two gram of magnesium plus one gram of oxygen makes two gram of MgO. No, it is incorrect. I hope it's easy for you now. What about balancing chemical equation? We already said the correct formula of reactant is on the left side and the correct formula of product in the right hand side. So ethane reacted with oxygen to form a carbon dioxide, for example. C2H6 plus oxygen is equal. How many oxygen here? Two. How many oxygen here? Two and one is three. Is the left hand side? Is the same right hand side? No. Here is different. Two, but here are three. This means it is different. Right? So we have to balance it. How we balance it? Then we have to multiply by two. Yes. So you can practice that. C2H seg plus oxygen. Start with carbon. How many carbon? Here is two. And here is one. So it's different. Hydrogen is six. And here is two. It's different. 
Oxygen 2 and here is 3 is different. So start with carbon. Why? Because as we said before, organic chemistry means carbon. Then hydrogen, then oxygen. But not oxygen, right? Carbon or hydrogen, but not oxygen. So two carbon on left, one carbon on right. And then multiply CO2 by two. If you multiply here by two, it means two carbon, like two carbon, right? Then it comes oxygen. How many hydrogen? Six on the left. How many hydrogen? Two. Then you multiply, multiply by three. Then it will give you three. So now you can calculate it. It will be how many carbon is two or two? How many hydrogen? Six. And here is six. How many oxygen is two? And here is still two. Uh, multiplied by two is four and one is five. Means it's still not balanced. So we must continue. Two oxygen on left. But here four oxygen and three oxygen. It means in total we have here through four plus three is seven. But here is only two how we can solve it, seven on the right. So multiply oxygen by seven divided by two. So seven divided by two. Then remove fraction, multiply both sides by two. If we multiply both sides by two, what will happen? Here is two, right? And seven oxygen. Now, if you calculate it, it will be correct. How many oxygen here? Six. And here is four multiplied by two is eight, six. And the eight is 14. And here, two multiplied by seven is 14. It means that you balance the equation. I think now it is easy for you. And the carbon here is two multiplied by two is four. And here are four as well. So now it is done. I think, I hope it is easy for you. Check to make sure that you have the same number of each type of atom in both sides in order to balance the equation like what we did before in the uh, final. You can put the reactant on left-hand side, product in left right-hand side. Both are the same in all numbers. I hope it is easy for you. Now you can practice and balance another equations like this one. And this is... is to practice you again, I think, please, you try to do it by yourself and also work in groups. Uh, it will be easy for you, like aluminum plus oxygen, give aluminum oxide, Al2O3. Now you can practice to do it as well. And here you start with aluminum and oxygen. One aluminum on left, two aluminum here, you put two here. Then you come to the oxygen and you multiply by oxygen by three divided by two, like what we did last time in order to get at end. Four aluminum and four aluminum, six oxygen and six oxygen, because you multiply it by here four and you multiply it by here by three to give two aluminum. This is how it works. So please uh, practice on such uh, examples. And now we go to amount of reactants and the products. A basic question in chemical laboratory is how much product will be formed from a specific amount of starting material, reactants, or how much starting material must be used to obtain a specific amount of product. To do that, you have to follow the equation. Write the balance equation as we said before. Convert the given amount of reactants to moles. Use the mole ratio from balanced equation to calculate the number of moles of product. Convert the number of moles of product is to grams. So in conclusion, in any reaction, you can say the amount of reactants and the products is like that. Reactant and product. So mass of compound A will give mass of compound A. Product, mass of compound B, here is the moles of compound B. So if you take reactants, the mass A will give moles of compound A. Use molar mass, gram per mole. And here compound A, use molar 
mole ratio of A and B from balanced equation, which we explained to give moles of compound B. And use the molar mass here in order to get mass of product. So the mole method, first you must convert the quantity of reactant A in grams or other unit to number of moles, right? Next, use the molar ratio of the balanced equation to calculate number of moles of product B. Finally, convert to moles of product is two grams of product. Right? I hope is easy for you now to practice on chemical equation. So in the final, use gram ratio of A and B from balanced equation in order to uh, calculate reactants to product is. Uh, then now you can practice on such example. The food we eat is degraded or broken down in our bodies to provide energy, of course, for growth and function. I told you before, chemistry is also our food. A general overall equation for this very complex process represented the degradation of glucose. You know that. That's why this is a problem of diabetic people. To carbon dioxide and water, this is the equation which we solved it before. What about if 856 gram of glucose is consumed by person over a certain period? What is the mass of carbon dioxide produced? <laughs> now I can listen to you. We make sure that equation is balanced as we explained before to be left equal right. This is the first. Second, in convert gram to mole of glucose. How we convert it in is equal mass divided by, by molar mass, right? And for glucose, we know it before, six multiplied 12, six carbon, 12. 12 hydrogen is one. Six oxygen, which is 16, this will give you 180, right? So now you get the molar mass. So you put 180 and they give you already 856. So it means that you have 4.76. So from the equation, which we get before, one mole of glucose and six moles of carbon dioxide. What about what we get here is 4.76. And what we get here is a mark. So you put here like scissor, then you will get the moles of carbon dioxide is 28.5. I think it is easy equation to practice on it and convert to moles to gram. So the mass equal mole multiplied by molar mass, as we said before from uh, uh, the equation, then we have to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide from carbon 12 plus 16 multiplied by two, which is 44. So 28, which we get before, multiplied by 44, it will give you 1.2 of carbon dioxide. Limiting the reagent A plus P equal C plus D. What is limiting reagent? Look to the equation. It is the reactant used up first in a reaction because the maximum amount of product to form it depends on how much of this amount was originally present. How much? This for excess reagent is reactant present in quantities greater than necessary to react with the quantity of limiting reagent. The one that is left at the end of the reaction. By knowing the limiting reagent, we can determine the amount of product. Always take the smallest number. So I hope you understand what is the limiting of the reagent. Then you can see the example here. It is urea with this example is prepared by reacting ammonia and the carbon, right? To get urea. You know, urea, we use it in agriculture. I told you chemistry is our life. In one process, 637 of ammonia treated with this amount of carbon dioxide. 
which of the two reactants is, is the limiting reagent? Calculate first the amount of mass of the product. And how much excess in grams is the left at the end of the reaction? So we should calculate how much product each reactant product and the one with the smallest number is the limiting reagent. To do so, we have to use previous method of calculation, which we used it previously, right? You have a paper and a pen, it's a scissor, right? So start with the lip, NH3, convert it to mole, the amount which we have given, divided by nitrogen is 14, and hydrogen 3 multiplied by 1, so 14 plus 3 is 17, right? Then with carbon dioxide, carbon 12, plus 32 equal 44. So then you get the amount here. So now we make the system, right? So two moles of ammonia and give one mole of this compound. Again, 37, which we conclude here, will give how many mole? Then now you can calculate this. The same here. One mole of carbon dioxide give one mole of this. So carbon dioxide, we get already 25 from the equation. We'll give how many mole? Then you calculate it as well. Then you get how many here of the product and here is how many of this one. So 18.74 and here is 25.94. Thus, the limiting agent is ammonia, right? That's what we conclude because it produced the least amount of product. This is the least amount of product. Always take the smallest number, right? So NH3 is limiting agent. This is the amount of gram is formed. And this is the excess of the reagent in the left. So the explanation now is 600 divided by 17, as we said before, and the other one divided by 44 of carbon dioxide. Now, according to the balanced equation, it means that two moles of ammonia react with one mole of carbon dioxide from urea and water. So 37.4. And I think we will practice together for in the next one is uh, about uh, such uh, examples. Now you go to the ammonia is limiting reagent and will control the amount of product. So carbon dioxide is the excess reagent as we have seen 25 minus 18, which we conclude before in order to get this amount. What about the mass of this compound? We get it as well using this equation. What about mass of the left? The same way. Then you calculate it in the answer. So what about reaction yield? This is the theoretical yield. And how we cal so we calculate the theoretical yield and we compare it with the actual yield. So theoretical yield, it means that the amount of product that result in all limiting reaction. Actual yield is the amount we get it from the reaction. We do it by our hand. So this is theoretical and this is by hand. The percent yield is the proportion of actual yield to theoretical yield, which can be obtained. Actual yield divided by theoretical yield multiplied by 100. So quantities of product calculated by maximum amount, which is 100%. Most chemical reactions don't give 100% yield. So the side reactor, reactions, unwanted reaction. What means side reaction? It means we get it as a side. It means you don't need it. You don't want it. It's unwanted. Reversible reaction. It means reaction give product. Product again gives the reactant. So both ways. Losses in handling and transferring. This is the end. I hope you have enjoyed by our lecture. And please practice with examples. And don't forget to contribute the lectures to the others with the mission of contributing science. I hope it's easier, but we'll take one more lesson in order to practice with more examples about calculating uh, uh, the yield.
and the balance of the equation and also to work in groups. Thank you very much for your kind attention and see you again. All the very best.